Welcome back to another Fireside Chat, where we bring casual technology conversations to you. With us, I've got Trevor Butler, and we're talking AWS. Trevor, thanks for being on. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So today we're talking about AWS, um, and it, really infrastructure as a service, a lot of customers are thinking, hey, it's a development platform. Uh, maybe I, I can use it, but only for development. Uh, give, a, give us your take on it. What, what, what is it? Uh, how can customers use it? Right, so a lot of, uh, there's a big misnomer uh, in the industry that AWS is only really used uh, for developers. And when, in reality, it's not. It actually is much broader than that. And yes, developers use it, but it, in reality, it is an infrastructure as a service. It is right. no different than your data center or any equipment you have on-prem. Right, and, and, and I think what we're seeing with customers is uh, you know they're trying to figure out how do I navigate this cloud story? How do I mm. how do I get some of my on-premise infrastructure to leverage the cloud, or how do I leverage the cloud to augment some of my on-premise infrastructure? You know what what are some of the ways you're seeing us do that for customers? Well, uh, it's not one of those things where you it's all or nothing. Mm -hmm. You know you're not just going to uproot your entire data center and move it into AWS. Right. Uh, so what we tend to see is we see customers start off with maybe just backups, okay. and they'll, they'll move their backups and leverage AWS, as they call it Glacier, okay. um, and they'll start there. Then maybe they might move their DNS over to uh, where AWS is hosting their public DNS. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, and then they just piece by piece, will just slowly move over, and then eventually that's their production environment. What, what are some of the concerns, like as, you know, if I'm a customer and I'm, considering moving some of my infrastructure or some of my workloads to mm -hmm. AWS. Uh, with networking and, and connectivity, what are some of the things that I could do to ensure connectivity is there? So AWS has very much its own, what they call virtual private cloud. Okay. And it's networking, basically the networking aspect of AWS. Okay. Um, they have uh, two ways uh, right now that you can do it where you have just a straight, regular VPN connection uh, so from your campus to to the cloud and have a back end way in, um, as well as they have like we call their direct connect, where you can actually ship them a router and have a direct connection to one of their their uh, data centers. Okay, and then the, also with Cisco, I think there's a CSR platform as well, right? Right. And, and so could that integrate as well from a DMVPN perspective or? Yeah, so what the CSR is, it's basically just a cloud uh, service, uh, integrated service router. Yeah. And it, it's basically just the image of that ISR router that we all know and love. <laughs> and uh, we put it up on, on the cloud as a virtual image and route traffic to it like it's a normal machine and it does its normal routing that yeah. it's built to do. And so, so really, you know, with leveraging AWS, it can almost become, a customer could think of it as their data center, essentially. Yes, and in many ways, when we actually set up a customer, um, it's just another site to them. Mm -hmm. And they just see it as another site with servers and um, and storage and all that kind of stuff that you would just think about in a normal data center. I, I think some of the, the apprehension for cu from customers comes from there's so many options. When I look at AWS, I see so many services, so many options. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do we, you know, how do you simplify that for a customer? Well, the biggest thing is AWS, there's nothing in AWS that you don't already know. Mm. They just call it something different. Okay. And so once you make that correlation of, oh, you know, an EC2 instance is nothing more than just VMware. Okay. Or like a VMware, like vCenter. Okay. Um, and or like the uh, the VPC is your switches and your your networking. Okay. Um, once you start correlating those things, it's actually quite easy, and you realize that you actually already know the tools to yeah. use AWS. Right. Oh, okay. Awesome. And and so, so if I'm a customer watching this video, and mm -hmm. I, and I'm I'm thinking to myself, I'm considering making the move into AWS. What would be some of the things you would consider, or you would you would you'd be concerned with, or want to think about? Well. AWS has a lot of different regions, um, mm -hmm. and within those regions, they have a couple different data centers within them. And so they have this kind of scaled out, build out type of uh, uh, infrastructure that's great for redundancy. And, mm -hmm. and so 
things like that where how many data centers do I want to actually utilize of AWS, um, the connectivity back because it's uh, typically if you use their just regular VPN, you we need to consider where do I want that traffic to, to connect to. Right. Um, things like my applications, what applications do I want to go uh, use? Uh, and there's a bunch of services, not just just you know bringing in my VMs and hosting them there, but Amazon itself also has a lot of different services that might take the uh, the need of a different v of VM uh, and be able to do it at a lower cost. Oh, nice. Uh, so uh, a good example of this is they have uh, built-in relational databases, SQL databases, okay. um, where rather than hosting in a Windows server that has like Windows SQL on it, you can just spin up a SQL server natively and not have to worry about that operating system. Okay, okay, so less management for the customer. So, so right. as you're moving into AWS, there may be some consideration for application optimization. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And, and uh, if, if I am moving my workloads in there, should, you know, thinking from a customer's perspective, what, how, how would I go about calculating what's going to be my cost? What does my cost structure look like? What would be some of the things they could do around that? So AWS is natively free. Oh. Um, and then they, you pay per, for basically using the resources. Mm -hmm. So each service kind of has a different cost model around it. Mm -hmm. um, to, to give a couple examples, um, things like storage is, is uh, calculated by how much storage you use, so mm -hmm. by the gigabit. Uh, Things like um, the compute is actually hours of compute used mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. So it's very kind of a la carte. You kind of choose what you want and, and then you get a bill at the end. So if I'm a customer and I'm watching, I'm watching this and I want to I understand AWS a little bit more, how, how does that AWS align to customers' on-premise infrastructure? Yeah, so I mean, AWS is no different than any other data center. Okay. Um, they have you know, hosts that run VMs. Uh, there's storage that you attach to those VMs and then the network that transmits the data between every, all of that. And so the different services within uh, AWS align to the different aspects. Okay. Uh, for instance, uh, EC2 instances are basically just your guest operating systems in like a VMware, like okay. a vCenter. Um, the VPC is your networking. Got uh, it. Your switches, yeah. your, your, your routing, as well as like VPNs back in. Um, your S3 is just your storage. Okay. Um, so, so it's not as complex as maybe you may, you know, at first look, AWS looks very complex. Right. But if you're used to your on-premise infrastructure, it's very similar to, to your on-premise infrastructure with just a different name. Right. Yeah. And, and, and about architecture and design, do those same things need to be taken into consideration when you go into AWS? Yeah, so the big thing with AWS is redundancy. It's about redundancy, redundancy, redundancy. And it's like the, the biggest thing to go into AWS with. Okay. Uh, they have all the hardware that you could ever wish you could buy and use it. Okay. Well, thanks, Trevor, for, for coming out. It's been a great chatting with you. Appreciate the time. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So there you have it, AWS. Uh, some, some things to consider. Uh, On-premise infrastructure, very similar to AWS uh, infrastructure, just with different terminology. Um, and then connectivity, how do I connect to the AWS infrastructure? That'd be something to consider. And then lastly, just what are, what's my expected bill? How do, I, how do I anticipate what my bill's gonna be when I move these workloads into AWS? Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please email us at firesidechat at lookingpoint.com. Thanks for watching. It's a fireside chat, y'all.